He's a four-time Super Bowl champion, but you won't find his name on a play-by-play -play or stat sheet. I'm Ronnie Barnes, and I'm the head athlete trainer and senior vice president for medical services for the Giants. Do they have like a Hall of Fame for athletic trainers? Uh, there is a Hall of Fame for athletic trainers. Yeah. I'm in it. With all due respect to the coaches and general managers that we've had here, he's the most important guy in the building. He's pretty much untouchable. What'd you do, Alex? I don't know if any other trainer in the NFL has as much power and pull uh, as Ronnie Barnes has. He's always gonna rank high in my life because I dealt with injuries with the New York Giants. He really was tremendous. He's like the Tom Brady of trainers. Keep fighting, keep fighting, all right. Being an athletic trainer has been Ronnie Barnes' ambition since middle school. I was a terrible athlete, so a coach in the junior high school asked me if I'd be interested in being an athletic trainer. I said, that sounds very interesting. So I became a student athletic trainer, taught us to tape ankles and apply ice bags. <laughs> While working on his master's degree at Michigan State, Barnes took a summer internship with the Giants and was hired full-time in 1980. People liked him instantly and respected him, and uh, I think my father saw that very early on. Wellington Mara, he was uh, always in the background, always at practice, he observed me. He then named me head athletic trainer here at the Giants. Not only was it a great opportunity to go to a pro team, but it was a great opportunity for me as an African American. I was the first African American ever to be appointed as an athletic trainer for an NFL team. Barnes was part of an organizational overhaul that saw the Giants make strides on the field and in the training room. He implemented a lot of things, that's for sure. We got a little more modern technology. There were no computers at the New York Giants, so I went up to the general manager and I asked him if we could buy a computer to do this program. And he said, don't you think you could do it by hand? And I said, no. When I arrived, there was a heat lamp and some hot rub. I brought in rehabilitation techniques for folks who had surgery. Helped us hire uh, a strength and conditioning coach. I hired a nutritionist. Yeah, Ron, you want to sue me? Yeah, you're trying to eat yourself out of the league. The arrival of head coach Bill Parcells meant big things for Barnes and the Giants. Bill Parcells is a Hall of Fame coach, so it's always great to work with coaches who get it. Ronnie, is he out? One of the greatest opportunities in my life is to work with him. Super Bowl number 21. I would go with Bill Parcells every away game to the stadium early. The morning prior to the Super Bowl, silence, complete silence. And so I said to him, you're not nervous, are you, coach? And he said, nervous? What's that? I said, well, I'm sure you're worried about Elway. I said, we're going to chase him out into the parking lot. Well, he loved that line. Elway got the ball, backs up to the two. He's in the end zone, got him, crazy! The Giants are the Super Bowl champions. <laughs> to go there for your very first time, that was something extremely special, and I will never forget it. One years later, guard Rich Seibert hoisted the Lombardi Trophy, an impossible feat had it not been for Barnes. Well, I broke my leg in 2003 playing a game, and you know, the first person that came to the field to me was, was Ronnie. And this looks serious for Rich Seibert. I had the surgery. He came into the hospital and asked me if I could feel my foot, and my smart comment was, I don't know, why don't you touch it? And he told me, I, I have been touching it, you haven't moved. So, um, I had compartment syndrome in my lower leg, and you know, if he didn't come in there to check on me that night, you know, who knows what would happen? Because as you look into compartment syndrome, people lose their legs for that kind of stuff. So, for the next year and a half, I pretty much lived in that training room. And he told me that if I just kept working hard with those guys, that I'd be back on that field. He saved my leg and my career. So three weeks post-op today, right? Yep. It's been three weeks since you had your ACL. Three, three weeks. weeks. I wish all ACL patients looked like that. So you're doing well. He puts the human being first before the football player, and I think that's a hard thing to do in this business, especially for as long as he's done it. When I got drafted in 07, my dad, who played in the league, Ronnie treated him back in the day, gathered me and said, 
You have to know one person, yeah. Ronnie Barnes. Yeah. I, I said, like, who's Ronnie Barnes? <laughs> it's the head trainer. I said, who cares about the head trainer? <laughs> sure enough, he was right. He doesn't sugarcoat a lot of things, but he's very compassionate. This is a tough business that players are in. Oftentimes, the athletic trainer is a person who holds their hand, says, you're doing well. Keep at it. For Big Blue, Barnes is always on call. To be there when people really need you. Somebody calls you one or two in the morning and there's something wrong with their wife or they have a child and to help them where I can. When my daughter broke her arm, Ronnie Barnes is the first person, you know, I call, hey, you know, what do I do? Who do I need to get in touch with? He jumps on and he treats every player and their families like they're his own kids. At the worst of times, Barnes is at his best, as cancer survivor Dave Gettleman can attest. The cancer, my wife did not have to worry, but I think Ronnie just made sure everything was right. He set the whole thing up. My mother always referred to him as her 12th child because we really do feel like he's part of the family. He took care of my father the last few months of his life uh, when he was hospitalized. Uh, Ronnie was there basically every day taking care of him, and uh, you know, that's something we'll never forget. This is a picture of me and Mr. Mara at a black tie event with appreciation and affection. You're patient well. I have a lot of pride with that. He's really the most respected and revered person in this building to show you his dedication to this organization. I mean, he could have retired years ago and never worked a day in his life, but he loves being here. I love my job, I really do. I love helping the player who's injured get back to play, and there's nothing better than that. Hey Giants fans, Saquon Barkley here. If you wanna see more videos, subscribe below.